I, I guess I, I'd start with, you know, hopefully that's brought back a lot of memories um, watching that again. And um, I'd like to ask you about some of them. And, and perhaps I can start with, with Mark, um, because obviously extraordinary experience at so young to be in such a acclaimed and, uh, and well-known film. And I, I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit about how you got to be Oliver and, and your experiences of, of making it. Well, I, <laughs> I seem to remember there was a, a long, drawn-out series of interviews and auditions. I was at stage school at the time, and they, I knew that this film was going to be made, and I kept being asked to go to these auditions, and every time I went, there were less and less boys there, and eventually <laughs> it got down to, I think there was about three of us, He was, final ki he was three. killing them around the corner. <laughs> 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 Anyway, uh, we got down to the final three, Carol Reed, I think John Wolfe, and a few other people that were, were there looking at us. And they, we were at the, some big hotel in London, and they uh, sent us off to get our hair cut. And the barber in the hotel was told to cut our hair really badly. And he said, <laughs> I can't cut hair badly. I can't, just can't do it. He said, just do it like he, they were Victorian workhouse children. Anyway, so we came back with our hair all cut. And then we were sent home, so thank you know, <laughs> thanks a bunch. Um, and then heard nothing. And then about a week later, uh, my I was in the bath, I think, at the time. My mother came up and said, uh, "You've got the part of Oliver, and you start work on Monday." <laughs> and that was it. And Ken, you obviously played Noah Claypole in 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 the first part of the film. Um, did you have to do a lot of auditions in the same way? or No, nothing at all. I mean, um, <laughs> I, I was given this part. I think somebody asked me if I could fall, and this is a terrible thing actors always do. They always say they can do anything, whatever's asked of them. And I, I had learnt to fall at drama school, but I hadn't learned to fall backwards off a trestle. <laughs> and uh, when I actually... I tried it out for myself just before we did it, and I fell off the thing and got a terrible shooting pain in my back. I thought, oh, I'm really damaged. This is awful. What am I going to do? And I didn't dare tell anyone because I was convinced that I would be replaced. And so I just kept quiet about it and s somehow did the sequence. And when, then when I fell off in the take, I hit the spot where I'd injured myself and put it back in or something. <laughs> 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 it really was miraculous. <laughs> And so that was it. I, I had just five days on it, and in the evening I was doing Joe Wharton's loot in the West End. So I, was, I felt very necessary because they would sort of ferry me from Shepperton to the Criterion Theatre where loot was on. And on one day it was so close that they had to drive me in the car in my Noah Claypole costume. Mm -hmm. And I got to the theatre and I took it off put my outfit for, for loot and went straight on stage. I thought, oh, I'm so necessary. <laughs> <laughs> very, very different experience f for you, Ron, because you were obviously in the original um, stage production, the ter terrific hit in the stage production, but then there was, there was quite a gap between the stage production and the film being made, five or six, seven years. Seven years. Um, <clears throat> and was it always, I mean, I've read different things about, the, you know, the casting of, of yourself, was it always, did you always know that it was definitely going to be you in the film version? Or was that, I mean, what, what did you have to kind of persuade the producers or was it because of, because of your relationship with Lionel Bart, was it always a kind of given that you were going to be Fagan in the film? It wasn't, it wasn't given at all, actually. I went into the first day of rehearsal, which was in fact <coughs> with Honor White. We started re rehearsing the, the dance numbers about three months ahead of the shooting. And um, I, I, I remember that it was just this feeling, even though we were watching Rushes, a feeling that I was going to get the chop any minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Moody, out. <laughs> yeah. But the strange thing was that one day we shot the, um, the scene where I tell Oliver... Uh, is going to be if you if you if you carry on the way you you're doing, you are going to be the greatest man of all time. Do you remember that scene? No. Well, you should do. You've only just seen it. <laughs> 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 and, 
Anyway, there I was saying these lines and then I sing to the boy, you got to pick a pocket or two, boys. <laughs> I can still do it! <laughs> Yet. I'm not all washed up just because I'm an alta caca. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So I sing this. The next day I'm going into rushes because I always went to rushes because I love to get lessons from watching what we'd done, you know. And um, they, they shot the, they, they, shot, they displayed the, no, no, it wasn't that. It was John Wolfe. John Wolfe came onto the set the next day and he said, that's all I needed to know. I knew I'd got the part. <laughs> After all that um, uncertainty, because they loved that scene, which was very moving, I have to admit, <laughs> it touched me. <laughs> and that was it. I guess how I got it, I think. But... Um, you can't always be sure that you're cast. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But Mark, what, what was, I mean, your experience as, as, I mean, you got the part, you were then acting with, um, with Ron Moody, with Oliver Reed, with all these um, uh, established and, and in some cases very famous performers. How, how hard was it as a, as a, I mean, obviously you said you worked a year on it, um, but how hard was it as a young man on a movie of that scale, and what was the experience like? I, it wasn't really hard at all. I mean, the the whole for me, the whole it was like a big family. I mean, Carol Ree was brilliant in his method of directing children, and he just made it a very fun experience. He had clowns on, he had magicians to make us all laugh, and uh, the, 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 all the guys, although. A lot of them, a lot older than I was. It was just like one sort of big, big family. I mean, it wasn't a, like a work endurance experience at all. So it was very, very easy to to work in those uh, circumstances. Did Reed himself give you a lot of direction? Did he spend quite a lot of time? He was very clever because he didn't give us no what appeared to be no direction or very little direction. But of course, he was there all the time, and and he was he was meticulous. And I I don't know if you remember that scene where we were chasing, we were running around yeah, and around yeah. in the kitchen. Mm. How many times did we do that? An awful hundred lot. and <laughs> it was over a hundred takes, I believe. Really? Yeah. Oh, well. um, Couldn't do it now. <laughs> it took three days to film, fifteen seconds of filming. Well. Ron, can I ask you about Carol Reed? About in, in terms of your working relationship with him, what was it? What was it like being directed by Carol Reed in this film? I think it was the best direction I've ever had from uh, 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 anybody. Uh, you get every kind of director, don't you? The director that that um, loves uh, his mates, and the director that hates the producer's mates. All that you get every variation under the sun because they're all people. And they're, they're human beings, and they um, have their own hang-ups. But Carol was a gentleman. It's the only word, I think, that describes his attitude to his work. He invited me to lunch before we started shooting uh, and, and um, wanted to know how to do, how to do musicals. It's because he'd never done one, had he, he'd before? Never done no. One, no, and so he got me to come to lunch so he could sort of, you know, find out from me, my experience. And uh, he was a very, very kind man. And um, he kept indicating, he, in fact, he taught me whatever I did uh, as an actor, he taught me to act on screen. He did an extraordinary thing with me, he was describing something, and he went like that and he made a gesture, and he caught someone round the face who just happened to be walking by. <laughs> and. Uh, it didn't register at all. <laughs> it's one of the funniest things I'd ever seen. Yeah. But he—he he, he, no, he was a, he was a lovely man. He was an old-style gentleman, wasn't he? Yeah. But that's possibly to his advantage that he, he hadn't done a musical before, because yeah. so much of that film actually is a very moving drama, isn't it? Yeah. And I, and it's I, I think it's 
thank you for letting me see a new print of it because it I looked didn't, beautiful. Up I there, didn't, didn't realise how beautiful the film is. It's yeah. uh, and it, it's actually Rem, Rembrandt's up there. And you're and and it's Rembrandt. Yeah, Rembrandt. You're like a you're like a oh come on. <laughs> you're like a Rembrandt painting. And when you when you say that about uh you know, well it's no fun being old and all that. Here's me who was young Noah going, Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's very, very, very deep, beautiful film, I think. Yeah. It's also a tribute to the cinematographer Oswald Morris, who is still with us. He we did ask him if he to come today, but um he he's ninety three and he he didn't quite feel up to it, but, uh, Who's but that? Uh, the <laughs> cinematographer Oswald Oswald Morris. Oh, he's still with us. He's uh, ninety-three. Yeah, he's ninety-three. My God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm only eighty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm it's gonna... a great thing to be old because you get a round of applause <laughs> every time you tell them. I've also got gout. <laughs> 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 to see um, David Lean's version of Oliver Twist before I um, did the original stage production right. in 1960. Right. I went to see it because I wanted to get some... I didn't know what to do. I, I wasn't particularly keen to be in it because um, the image of Fagin was pretty vicious and unpleasant. And um, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to perpetuate the, what I considered to be a, an unfair, unpleasant image of Jewish people. And so I didn't oh. want to do it. And when I saw the film, I thought, how can I possibly do this film? You can't make a musical out of a monster. He's a monster in the book. He's a, 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 a corrupter of children. There's other words for it. And I saw that and I said, I can't do it but I could only change it. And so when I was sent the script of, 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 of Oliver, and I saw that Lionel Bart was already halfway there in his lyrics, you know, um, pick a pocket or two is turned into a comic improvisation. And um, I realized the way to play Fagin was to, to forget Dickens, I don't know if that, you consider that to be um, re reasonable, but to forget Dickens and to create a clown. And I used every trick that I could think of to, 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 to take Fagin away from Dickens' concept and to bring it into more of an entertainment situation, uh, like... For example, when I was given the, um, the flute, the, the um, umbrella, when I took the umbrella from a boy, I was going to, I should have thrown it away afterwards. That was over. But I hang on to it. And so suddenly we're coming up to another number. You can go about be back soon. And the flute transmogrifies, which is a, a word we use, we clowns, it transmogrified into a flute. And it was, you can go but while you're working. You can play the plane around until you're home safe and sound. And I danced around with this flute. In the same way I used that as, as a, what's it, uh, the Pied Piper. Yeah. The concept of the Pied, Pied Piper, Piper was clear. added to Fagin. I kept adding uh, characters from other musicals and other books all intending to, to distract, to push away, to get away from the monster of Dickens. And it seems to have worked. I think it's probably a lot of the success the film's had in America is down to you having done that. Because I believe the David Lean film, they were very offended. Yeah, no, there were by, riots by in Alec Berlin. Yeah, yeah and, 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 riots in and Berlin, he, it caused a big stink in America. I mean, they didn't want to actually give it a license because they regarded it as anti-Semitic. Yeah. Uh, 1948. I mean, in fact, Alec Lee Guinness Bush, had yeah. based his performance on the caricatures that were in the book. The George Cruikshank's illustrations, absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and look, it got, the, it got the Academy Award for the Best Picture, which it possibly wouldn't have done yeah. if you hadn't done that.